Hey there again folks, welcome back to my Let's Play of Remember Living, The Age of Infinity. And we are in the middle of quite the scene here. What does she mean by that? That is a very good question. Um, drawing assumptions. Well, there's the right assumptions or not is another matter altogether. So let's, let's uh, solve this mystery. By the way, uh, music is kind of, kind of nice here. All these games have really good music. Uh, so, hoorah for the, uh, for the composer. Hoorah! Is that a normal thing to say? I don't know. <laughs> Yesterday? Exactly, what she's talking about. I have the slightest idea. This is bad. I have absolutely no idea what she's referring to because anime characters, especially in visual novels, like to work that a lot. That. That. Surprised that that's not the that, that that's not that, that they just replace all the nouns in a visual novel with a with that. Like, I have absolutely no, no that what she's referring to. I'll be found out. I do do. What do we do? We went on a merry-go-round together? We did it on a merry-go-round? Whoa. That is pretty risque there. Uh, Satoru seemed pretty, uh, pretty, um, um, secluded, not secluded, uh, he doesn't strike me as a guy who, as a guy who would do that. Who would do? Oh my gosh! I almost said that. Stupid game. <laughs> he doesn't seem like he, he would be one to do it on a uh, on a merry-go-round. Of course, I'm I'm sure that's not what they're talking. About. I'm pretty sure that's not what they're talking about. Now it's sheer desperation. I'll just go along with uh, whatever she says. Oh, on the beach. Round and round on the beach. Round and round. Is she talking about what you see uh, in a lot of the movies where they're like just rolling around on the beach? Hmm, somehow this kind of scene came to mind. But Satru, as the axis, he held onto Mayazumi and swung her round and round as she clung to him. Oh, or it could just be, like, yeah. Like one of those rides in an amusement park. That must be it. Using that mental picture as a reference, I spoke tentatively. Since it was something I would never imagine Mayazumi doing. <laughs> でも、サトルはちっとも楽しそうじゃなくて、私だけ一人で走れてたっけ。そうだったな。あんなのどこが楽しいんだか、俺にはさっぱり理解できんね。Although I said that I fully understood my Izumi's feelings, putting onto her boyfriend, ran around, lovers playing it with a beautiful night view behind them, a world of space, a time for just the two of them. I couldn't understand it well. No way, I'm envious. That's very romantic. <laughs> Did my Izumi laugh? She drew away from me. <laughs> Lying down, she drew the blankets over her head. 
I crashed her back softly and stood up. Looks like she somehow regained her composure. I think she'll be all right now. Yeah, she'll be fine, I'm sure. From beneath the blankets, Mayazumi softly said that. Ah, okay. What? She saw right through me. How did she know? <laughs> yeah, it's. I shouldn't. I shouldn't poke fun. It was a very touching scene. <laughs> yeah, I should. I shouldn't poke fun. It. It's a very nice scene. Makes Mayazumi much more humane than she has been. Much more likable. I said humane. I guess wouldn't be the proper word. I guess slackable would be the proper word. Despite my good deed, I felt just slightly dejected as I, as I thought I had put on a convincing act. Yes. I'm sure that you did. I'm pretty sure if I put on... I'm pretty sure if I went around as I am going like, Hey guys. I'm Shaquille O'Neal. Watch me shoot. Watch me shoot free throws, which of course I would do precisely as. Well, actually, I'd probably do worse. <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody would see through me. You know, if I did a hundred percent like impression, nobody see through at all. <laughs> when Shaquille O'Neal pops up as the first. Celebrity, I don't know. I haven't watched basketball in a while. I do hear they're making a Shaq Fu too, uh, which is amusing. I've never played Shaq Fu, but I hear it's horrible. <laughs> but, but I felt thankful to Mayazumi, who went along with with that with that me. Is that what she said? I felt like I'd gotten a bit closer to her, if, even if only a little. And I was glad she had cheered up. Felt that I felt that way from the bottom of my heart. Leaving my Izumi, uh, my, leaving my Izumi, I went toward Uni. Uni was squirming under the blanket. When I noticed he was holding the radio in his hand. あの時は濡れてただけだよ。ラジオの裏の蓋開けて乾かしたから、ひょっとしたら聞けるかも。濡れたら壊れちゃうものじゃないの？あれ？心を知らないの？電化製品を水洗いして修理するっていう方法もあ
I think I read that wrong. With the conclusion that I had come to. <laughs> that a conclusion that I had come to. Whoa, that's a really strange wake up se sequence. As he tampered with the radio, Uni's frown grew deeper. Like a plane crash. The radio was covered with weird scratches. There was a crack in the front of it as well. I recognize that radio, but from where? That's right, the day before yesterday. During my fight with Hattori, I had thrown the first thing that had come to mind, the radio at her. Made the decision on the spur of the moment. Is that when it was damaged? B -b 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 wait, so where are you at? Wait a moment. Why is the radio here cracked just like the one in Svea? Not only that, here's the charm too. Charm you received from Atsumi and... Oh yeah, that's right, I remember that. The uni of the shelter cabin had it as well. Additionally, I combed the uni's bangs upwards. As uni stared blankly at me, I could see an old wound was on uni's forehead. Isn't this the injury that Hattori gave him the other day? It's all healed now. What does it mean? Yeah, I was... I've been kind of under the impression that the uni in the past... Wait. Crap. How did, how does this game work again? Yeah, uh... Yeah, they're supposed to be in 2011 here and there in 2012 at Sphia. I was under the impression that I've been under the impression that the uni here is much more is a little older uh, or at least more mature I guess I should say older actually now it's pointing towards he might be older but more mature the one that's at, at Sphia I mean he you know he uh, isn't as mature he doesn't handle the situation as well you know, he's in a... You would... You would think that the situation at Svea to a kid would be better than the situation at the shelter cabin. You would think. To, to a kid's POV. I mean, and for a lot of people, you know. At least you have food, you have necessities, and a kid might not be inclined to realize that there might be somebody intending harm on somebody, you know, kids aren't. I mean, kids can sense things, but, you know, they're, they're not they're not supposed to be able to be like, yeah, that's a bad person. That's, that's the danger of being a kid, you know. But, uh, he's not handling it very well. And this uni, he's a lot, it's like, for the most part, he's kind of handled it the best of all of them. So, I've, yeah, it's very strange. And he's remembered stuff. This uni, I think, has, has mentioned stuff that happened. I can't remember if it's happened the other way around. The uni from Sphia mentioning stuff from here. Can't remember for sure, though, on, on that. But yeah. I've had that feeling. I, I can't remember if I mentioned it before. I, I, don't, I don't know what his thing is. I don't know what Uni's thing is. To be honest, maybe Uni is the fixed point. What if Uni is the fixed point and everything is being moved around him? You know, the the, uh, the Sphere is actually really in 2011, despite Sadru saying it's 2012. And. The cabin is 2012, despite the fact that it should be 2011. Even though, which would explain stuff like the paper and stuff, and the radio, too, as well. Now that that's there, is there anything that's been in the cabin? I mean, is there anything that's been in Spia? That shouldn't have been. 
think that's been the case yet. So yeah. It's kind of thinking. I always saw true think 2012. That's a good question. I don't know. Muster my courage and ask the question I've been wanting to ask all this while. I chose my words carefully and started to talk about the radio and the wound. Meanwhile, Yuni stayed silent. With a strangely mature face that didn't suit his age, he looked at me. While keeping my voice low so that neither Yomogi nor Mayazumi could hear, I explained what I had experienced. Then, strengthening my resolve, I asked him, ユニ、私が死体を見るって占いで言ったよね。私本当に見たの。ユニは未来のことを知っていたから。he didn't answer, he just silently stared at me. Hmm. Losing my patience, I grabbed Uni, who had been silent all this time, by his shoulders, raising my voice as I continued, despite saying you were trying to keep it quiet from the rest. Something fell lightly from his breast pocket. Something white, soft, like down. I picked it up. A feather of a white goose that was stuck in my hair that day. The day I first met Uni. The angel's feather, because those simple words, would have been so incredibly romantic. My conclusion has reached its limits. The charm, the cracked radio, the cut on his forehead. And he has the angel's so, feather. Looked into Yuni's eyes, his eyes were hollow. I don't know what he was looking at. Perhaps he wasn't looking at anything. Who are you? Sorry. Anata. All of a sudden, your muggy raised his face, surprised him, and I broke a little loud voice. Uh oh. At that instant. Yuni let out a strange scream, jumped out of his bed, and broke into a run. Okay, he did not want to answer the questions. I believe that scream and the running means that he does not want to answer our questions. I think. Pretty sure that means that. Oh, and he's running out the door. Wonderful. He opened the door before I could stop. Oh, great. Wonderful. Are we going back outside again? Cold air rushed into the room. There was a roaring blizzard outside. Yuni flew out into the raging storm. I chased after him in a panic. Yuni was standing in front of the shelter cabin. The driving snow striking at his face, he stood there looking up at the sky. I don't know for a reason. That I just suddenly had a picture of like... An alien spaceship coming along <laughs> at the end of ET and picking up Uni and taking them off. Random thoughts today. He didn't answer. While shielding my, fa shielding my face from the whirling snow, I called out to him again. What happened? Did my question cause this? Was it traumatic to him? <laughs> 
Hearing my desperate appeal, Yuni slowly turned his head toward me. <coughs> and in the furious storm, Yuni. It's a creepy ass grin. Yeah. Bit of a creepy creepy grin. Um This is an event I, I do feel that we are witnessing. Even that joke was not a joke. <laughs> the aliens are like flying over here and he's like Beam me up. I'm busting out of this joint. Then he just disappears and <laughs> Which oddly would would explain how he escapes and the others don't. <laughs> In a very, very bizarre sense. But this is an event, so we we'll, we're gonna we're gonna find out what all this is about possibly next time. I do hope you folks enjoyed, and I shall see you guys in the next one. Farewell there.